Welcome back to the Reproductive System on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. So in one of the previous videos, we talked about the process of oogenesis. Oogenesis was fairly complicated when we compare to spermatogenesis because in oogenesis, we had the production of polar bodies. Also, we had several, actually two to be specific, meiotic arrests. And so we've got you know, different types of eggs sitting in meiosis somewhere at different times for different lengths of time. And now to add an extra level of complexity, we also have to worry about what's called folliculogenesis. So we have the follicle development, which is folliculogenesis, and the egg development, oogenesis. Now, what's the relationship between those two things? Well, the egg is just the egg. The follicle is the container in which the egg develops, okay? So an analogy for that is if you go to cook some popcorn in the microwave, okay, the bag that the popcorn kernels are in initially, that's like the follicle, and the kernels are like the eggs, okay? Um, so pretty simple. But the follicle is the container in which the eggs are, are developing. And so not only do the eggs have to develop, but the follicles also develop alongside. And it can be difficult to tell uh, how these are synchronized. Uh, because, for example, um, when in folliculogenesis do we have different stages of the oocyte? And I was looking online for this uh, to get a good image of this, but I kind of had to make do because there's really not a lot good online where they correlate these two pretty well. Okay, um, So I went ahead and did that, and I'm going to try to explain it here. So up top, all this is folliculogenesis. Down here, what I've added, this is actually our oogenesis. And I'm going to kind of explain it here with the different uh, meioses and, and everything. Okay, So when we start off in folliculogenesis, we have these cells called squamous pregranulosa cells. Okay, These are going to develop into what we call a primordial follicle. Okay. The primordial follicle will then develop into a primary follicle, a secondary follicle, then what we call a graphene follicle, which is the mature follicle, and then from here it's going to rupture, which is what ovulation is. That rupture of the graphene follicle is ovulation. So that's the general steps of what's going on here. Now if we're talking about oogenesis, we of course start with the oogonium. And the oogonium uh, is going to divide and develop into what's called a primary oocyte. Okay? Now the primary oocyte is going to develop inside uh, these primordial follicles. And it's going to advance into meiosis, but only make it into prophase 1. So while you're a primordial follicle, uh, you're going to contain an oocyte that is a primary oocyte that's arrested in prophase 1. Okay? And actually, that primary oocyte is going to be arrested in prophase 1 for quite a while. Okay? So that primordial follicle is going to develop into a primary follicle. Okay? Uh, what we notice is that in the primary follicle around uh, this fluid in the center, uh, we actually have these granulosa cells. And I actually have a separate video where we go over the function of granulosa cells. But just understand that the granulosa cells are going to come first. Okay? And again, the primary follicle is still going to contain a primary oocyte arrested in prophase 1. At some point, the primary follicle is going to develop into a secondary follicle. Okay? Now, the secondary follicle, notice a few things. One, it's larger. Okay? Um, if we look at the layer of granulosa cells, they're thicker. Okay? Here it was just one layer of granulosa cells. Here there's a lot more layers of them. And also around the periphery of those granulosa cells, we have a new cell type. These are what are called theca cells. And again, in another video, I go over the function of theca cells. And it turns out that the granulosa cells and the theca cells are going to play important roles in uh, maintaining oogenesis and also uh, synthesizing hormones. I'll just mention it here, but I talk about it in this video. It turns out that the theca cells are actually responsible for making this uh, androgen called androstenedione from the parent steroid cholesterol. And then the theca cells are going to shuttle this androstenedione over to the neighboring granulosa cells, 
where they convert androstenedione into estradiol, which is the major estrogen. And so this is actually how the granulosa cells manufacture that estrogen, and that actually helps to maintain oogenesis, because we know that estrogen must be maintained for that. But those theca cells are only going to appear really once we're at the secondary follicle phase. Okay. Also notice at the secondary follicle phase, we're still having a primary oocyte that's arrested in prophase one. Okay. Now, at some point, okay, the secondary follicle is going to develop into what's called an antral or a graphian follicle. Another name for this you might see as a mature follicle. Now, the mature follicle is going to be very different in structure. It's going to be a lot larger, okay? But here's what we notice. Not only has the number of granulosa cells actually, uh, the layers have actually thickened, okay? But also around the oocyte right here, we actually see another layer of granulosa cells that surround that. These are what are called cumulus cells. And they're really just granulosa cells that happen to be in a different position where they surround this oocyte, okay? All right. Also notice the space between the cumulus cells and these granulosa cells over here. It's a fluid-filled space called an antrum. We don't see an antrum in either the secondary or primary follicle. We only see the antrum in the antral, also called the graphian follicle. And sometimes this antrum is called an antral cavity. And it's a large fluid-filled cavity. We also still have the theca cells that surround the periphery of this whole thing. Okay. Now, during the uh, development of the secondary follicle into the graphian follicle, notice that this a uh, primary oocyte, which is arrested in prophase one, is going to get the signal to develop further. So first of all, it's going to leave prophase one, go through metaphase one, and so on and so forth, and it's going to complete meiosis one. Okay, and when it completes meiosis one, of course, you're going to get the production of a polar body, and then you're going to have a secondary oocyte. Okay, and then that secondary oocyte, while you're in the graphian follicle state is going to start meiosis 2, but it's not going to get very far because it's going to get only to metaphase, this would actually be metaphase 2 of meiosis 2, and then it's going to get arrested there. Okay? And while the graphian follicle is just sitting there developing, okay, that secondary oocyte is going to be arrested in meiosis 2 in metaphase 2. Okay? And it's just going to sit there. And pretty much what it's going to be waiting for is ovulation, which is going to occur on day 15 of the female menstrual cycle. There's another cycle there that goes along with this, adds another layer of complexity that we'll talk about in another video. But if we get the signal for ovulation, uh, this graphene follicle is going to rupture. Okay? Now, notice... At the peak of maturity, let's say at day 14, right before ovulation, okay, we have a secondary oocyte in metaphase 2. Notice we're not actually ovulating an ovum. It's actually only a secondary oocyte that we're ovulating. So the process of ovulation is actually just the rupture of the graphian follicle. Notice that the secondary oocyte is just kind of coming out of here, out, moving through the antrum and then out. That's the rupture and that's ovulation. But also notice what's being ovulated. It's not an ovum, not yet. It's only a secondary oocyte. Very common misconception when you're talking about this. So the secondary oocyte is actually what is um, ovulated. And of course that secondary oocyte, we mentioned this in earlier videos, is going to be picked up by those fimbriae from the ovary. This is where oogenesis and folliculogenesis are occurring in the ovary. And when that... Uh, ovulation occurs, okay, uh, the fimbriae pick up that secondary oocyte, and the secondary oocyte moves into the infundibulum of the fallopian tube where it sits and awaits a sperm cell. Now, if no sperm cell actually gets here, then uh, the secondary oocyte will not finish meiosis too, and it will degrade down. We'll talk about what happens in that case later on. However, if there is a sperm cell, it can potentially fertilize the secondary oocyte. And when it does that, through the processes that we talked about in oogenesis, go back and watch that, um, that's fertilization, that will induce the secondary oocyte to not only complete 
meiosis II. That should actually be a II there. Um, but it will mature into, first of all, an ootid, and then an ovum. And then once the pronuclei in the ovum fuse, that is the pronucleus from the female and pronucleus from the sperm cell, the male, uh, they fuse into a mature nucleus. At that point, it has become a zygote. Okay? And from that, uh, we'll pick up in this video at the point in the zygote, and we're going to talk about how the zygote develops into a structure called a blastocyst. And it's going to involve a type of cell division that's very different from what you've probably talked about in the past. Most cell divisions are either mitosis for somatic cells or meiosis for germ cells, that is for the production of oogenesis, eggs, and sperm cells, spermatogenesis. This is a third type called cleavage, and it's going to be very different because as we're going to see, the cells are going to get progressively smaller. And that may not seem intuitive as to why you'd want to do that, but we're going to explain that in the next video. So hopefully this video was a good follow-up to oogenesis, and now you can see how oogenesis pairs up nicely with folliculogenesis. So please make sure to join us in the next video, and make sure to like and subscribe here. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.